previously on board. Come on, we have managed to get hold of because he's uh, must have his dad's dyslexia or something. Gave me the wrong number to phone him. But he has joined <laughs> us finally on the line is uh, Brandon Stone. Hello, B. What's happening, guys? Hello, uh, Brandon. Uh, all good, thanks. Where's this, this pseudo Texan American accent from suddenly? Uh, no, there's no American accent. Don't well, start what's happening, guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, ha- howdy there, partner. Well, howdy, how you partner. Doing? Hey, how those southern girls? All good? Sounds good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, where are you at the moment? Yeah, are, are you still in Texas? Yeah, I'm in Austin at the moment. We actually got our tournament this weekend, so we're all preparing for that and start tomorrow. So, um, luckily, I get to stay in my own bed for a little while. That's nice. Well, whose bed have you been staying in? Hotel rooms, Darren. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> Just remember, right. my mum listens to your radio, eh? Uh, no, I know, I know. She's, how you dares? How's it going? Um, now, listen. <laughs> um, yeah, awesome stuff. But now, how does this 14-year-old kid get a cracker nod at the, at the Masters and uh, the number one amateur in the USA, the number one uh, college player in the USA doesn't? What's going on? I don't know. They must have lost my invite in the mail. Yeah, that mail in America is <laughs> terrible, eh? Shocking. No, but I must say, when we were at Augusta National on Monday and we watched the kid play a little bit, mm. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. What, I mean, what is, it, what is it about him that, I mean, I don't know if there's never been a 14-year-old invited. Uh, I don't know if they allow 14-year-olds to go there when there's no golf, let alone go and play in the Masters. That is unheard of. Yeah, he, he actually won the Asian Amateur, which gives you an automatic exemption into the Masters since about 2008. Yeah. I mean, he, he won that about four or five months ago. He completely dominated the event, too. So mm. the guy can definitely play, and he's showing it the last few days. Yeah, well, I wish him all the best. But watch out, young 14-year-old Chinese guy, because Brandon <laughs> Stone is around, okay? So don't get too yeah. comfortable. Now, I believe when you were at Augusta that you got to uh, have dinner with Mr. Player. Yeah, I did. In fact, I had dinner with Mr. Player at his Augusta residence on Monday evening with a unbelievable event I mean we shared so many stories we chatted for hours it was was a lot of great fun yeah I mean what you must have obviously other than telling you to stay fit get in the gym do a thousand push ups things like that uh, he must have imparted a whole lot of advice to you as well and uh, and stuff from his experience definitely I mean we shared a lot of he told me a lot of things that he that he thought I needed to know for the future and that if he could go back what he would change and Obviously, the push-ups and the sit-ups came in there once or twice in the conversation. <laughs> but and what food, Brennan? What do you mean? What food? Uh, we had a filet bignon, a nice little steak that was so tender it almost melted your mouth. Mm. He had his own personal chef there, which was yeah. so nice. Yeah, I know he would. Yeah, especially, yeah. mate. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, uh, and, and who else did you bump into at Augusta? Um, I bumped into George Fitzgerald, Richard Stoney, Charles... Uh, Louis, Ernie, all the South African boys. I managed to walk a little bit with Ben, ben Crenshaw, who's an ex-Texas player, and we got to walk around with him and nice. have some hugs and some laughs with them. Uh, we got to watch Tiger and Rory a little bit here and there. All in all, it was just unbelievable. That, that Augusta National is just a special place. Yeah, it is. It's unbelievable. And uh, and who do you think uh, is going to win? I mean, already we've seen uh, Trevor is up there so you know it seems to be one of those courses doesn't matter how badly or how you've disappeared during the course of a year you come back to Augusta if you've won there before done well there before you generally tend to do well again I mean people like Larry Myers uh, even Tom Watson Ben Crenshaw I think was up and up and up there and Trevor Immelmans all former champions that we haven't really heard much of during the year and they're all uh, there or thereabouts yeah I think I think the thing is the moment you get a game plan on that golf course that's worked and you've won there I think you just keep sticking to it as the years go on I think mm. even though you might get a little bit older and the clubs might get a little bit longer that you head into the greens I mean a guy like Freddie Couples who's still what three or four under after yesterday I mean that's unheard of the yeah. guy's 50 something years old and he's still competing with guys like Adam Scott and Tiger Woods it's just uncanny yeah there's another one Freddie Couples another former winner who's, uh, who's then I think even Jose Maria uh, was lurking around yeah. somewhere under par so I really hope you know one guy that I, I've always said look I think Ernie deserves to win one um, I think Tiger is going to go and win it uh, I think Ernie deserves to go and win one I'd love to see him win one but another guy that I'd really love to see him win it and he's right up there led, led off to the first round is Sergio and it's amazing because he came out last year sometime and said listen I'm, I, I probably don't have what it takes to be a major winner 
So he was quite honest and open about it, saying he misses that one, that thing that you need to be a major winner. And uh, now he's in contention. So maybe that's taken a bit of pressure off him. Yeah, I think uh, there were a few holes yesterday where the old Sergio, I mean, he made a, he made a couple of six footers of par that the old Sergio would have missed that and just lost all momentum and melted down. But the thing is, that was almost like out of the ordinary for Sergio. He made those putts and he pulled a lot of momentum. So... Yeah. I'm actually very curious to see how he goes today and if he can keep that momentum going into the weekend. Awesome stuff. Well, listen, B, we'll stay in touch with you again. Uh, time's marching on, but it's lucky to catch up with you and uh, awesome to have seen that you got to spend some time with Mr. Player and, uh, yeah, as your career just um, gets bigger and bigger and blossoms more and more. And uh, maybe we'll catch up with you again sometime in May or June, maybe, if there's anything to talk about. Yeah, maybe when I get back in South Africa around the third or fourth of June, I come and pop in the studio there and say hi to the guys. Oh, All right. great. You got, a, you got an invite. That's made. Done. Dusted. All right. Lack of stuff. Perfect. Man. All right, B. Enjoy. Uh, enjoy. Yeah, good luck for tomorrow. And uh, how long is this tournament you playing? Uh, just the weekend. Saturday the weekend. Sunday. All right, well, good luck yeah. for the weekend. Keep it going over there. You're making us proud here in South Africa. And we'll catch up with you when you're back in SA, okay? Thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers, yeah, take care, Brandon. Bye. Bye. There we go, Brandon, yeah, like Brandon Stone, making his mom very proud, and his dad very proud as well. Mm. What are his dad's doing now? Kevin, probably driving home. Planning his retirement. Probably <laughs> driving home saying, Brandon, <laughs> yeah. be quiet so we can hear some more music. <laughs> probably what Kevin's saying. This is Balls Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate and John. Weekdays from 3pm to 6pm Central African Time. Bulls.co.za